Not too long ago, my family and I had a wonderful opportunity. We were looking for an adventure, and a small school in the middle of the Costa Rican cloud forest was looking for a science teacher. Costa Rica is a small country with a rich, diverse natural world. Costa Rica is in Central America. North America is to its north, South America is to its south, and the equator is not too far away. It seemed like Costa Rica would be a great place to explore. And sure enough, it was a great place to explore. We explored the forests. We explored the fields. We explored the rivers. We explored the trees. We even explored animals. Some of the animals we saw were reptiles. They had scaly skin and laid leathery eggs. We saw lizards on logs. Baby turtles crawling in the sand or swimming right out of your hand. Snakes and trees, more lizards running across the water, snakes sliding across the ground, and little anoles standing in the trees and showing off their beautiful colors. In Costa Rica, we also saw lots of amphibians. We explored mating toads. We explored poison dart frogs. Even though they can look very different, all amphibians start their lives as tadpoles in ponds, puddles, or even small wet leaves. We saw some frogs that blended in really well with the leaves, and other frogs that tried to blend in, but their red eyes and orange hands gave them away. While we saw most of the amphibians while exploring at night, when exploring by day, we saw lots of birds. You see him, Kay? We saw many mot mots, trogan birds, tanagers and woodpeckers, macaws, toucanets, and toucans. These were just a few of the birds we got to explore in Costa Rica. As we explored, we also saw lots of mammals. These all had hair all over their bodies, and they cared for their babies with milk from their mother's bodies. Pizotes, peccaries, tyras, agoutis, and so many more. Yes, being able to explore wild mammals almost every day was very, very special. One day, however, we saw something we didn't expect. No, it wasn't a lion, but it was still very cool. We were hiking in the rainforest, and we looked out at a clearing. And there, we saw a mountain. Well, we had seen many mountains before, this mountain was different. The first thing we noticed about the mountain was its shape. While mountains come in many shapes and sizes, this mountain was almost perfectly symmetrical. Both sides slanted down from the top at almost the exact same angle. The mountain also had clouds floating over it. And when we looked more closely, we realized that those weren't all just clouds. 
some of those clouds were made by the weather, and some of the clouds were actually made by the mountain. And in fact, this wasn't like any old mountain. This mountain was a volcano. So we spent the next few days watching the volcano. In the daytime, we heard rumblings and saw dust of rocks falling down the side. And at night, we saw trails of light as fiery, partially melted rocks tumbled down the side of the volcano. Watching and listening to the volcano erupt, we found a place to go hiking where the lava wasn't erupting anymore, but had erupted a few years earlier. And instead of seeing fiery hot rocks, we saw cold, dark, bumpy rocks that had lots of holes. Later, we learned that these kinds of rocks are called igneous rocks. And since we saw the rocks come out of the volcano, we knew that igneous rocks come from volcanoes or other kinds of liquid rock. We spent lots of time exploring the volcano and exploring the rocks and rainforests around the volcano. And these igneous rocks weren't only found near the volcano, they were also found in other parts of the country, even near the ocean. On the Costa Rican shores, there's many tide pools. These tide pools are home to many kinds of animals. Different kinds of fish. And even animals that aren't fish but they behave in manners similar to fish. These shallow pools of water were all formed by igneous rocks. And while the rocks near the volcano seem to have been formed by lava shooting out of the volcano or rolling down the hill. Near the shore, the igneous rocks seem to have been formed by lava flowing out of a volcano, flowing much more slowly, almost like a slow moving river. And the dark sand that covered parts of many of the beaches came from dust when the volcanoes were erupting and from little pieces of rock that were weathered away by wind, rain, ocean waves. Whenever the rocks crash together, they form smaller rocks, sand, and dust. With rocks like these in many places, we learn that much of the land in Costa Rica was formed by volcanoes. Some were erupting when we were living there, and others had erupted long, long ago. As scientists, we should always try to learn as much as we can by seeing it, by observing. 
we were fortunate to be able to see rocks coming out of the volcano and to see what they looked like after they had cooled. After observing the volcanoes and observing the rocks below the volcanoes, I saw similar rocks all over Costa Rica. Sometimes these rocks were close to volcanoes and sometimes they were far from volcanoes that I could see today. Now, the next time I see similar rocks, rough, dark, bumpy with holes, I have some clues that these rocks could be igneous rocks. And if they are igneous rocks, we have a clue that the land nearby was formed by volcanoes. Maybe those volcanoes are nearby today, or maybe those volcanoes were nearby long ago. The igneous rocks will give us the clues. And that, my friends, concludes our adventure of the igneous rocks, the volcanoes, and little bits and pieces of other parts of Costa Rica. I look forward to seeing you on another adventure where together we can explore nature and learn about science. Bye-bye.